Hey guys, this is Jacolia of Jacolia Gems. Welcome back home, family. For those of you that happen to be new here, I definitely hope that you hear something today that could persuade you to stay. Now, do me a favor. Go ahead and like this video, comment down below, share this to your social media platforms. I am about to be distributing some short, brief, um, those are the same thing. Some informational videos on the different gods that are named in the Bible, the nations that worship them, and some scriptures on them and who are who they're worshiped by. Right. So let's start with Adar Malek. Now, anyone that knows anything about the Hebrew calendar will know that Adar should ring off in your head. Then we know that Malek means king. So when you think about the month of Adar, it's very important to know that the calendar names of the months were named after the systems that they were tied to. So these a lot of these calendar month names are Babylonian. We have a month named Tammuz as well. So when you begin to look at Adar Malek, he's a Semitic god mentioned briefly by name in the Book of Kings, where he's described as a god of seraphim. And this is um, grammatically dual. And so this means that it's a location of two places. And so the identification of the twin cities, Sipra, Yahuram, this is in the ancient Near Eastern Sumerian and Babylonian city on the east banks of the Euphrates. It's a tail. It's located at the site of modern tail Abu Haba. And so this is clearly in Mesopotamia. And we know that this was the Nero Babylonian. And so clay tablets was found here. And we know that the Hiberu, the Hebrews, were called such because they crossed over from one side of Euphrates to the other. The other location would be Sippar Armanum, and this would be in Iraq as well, ancient Mesopotamia, Babylon. So this is where he was worshipped. The name Adumalek probably translates to magnificent king, an unrelated person with the name of Adur Malek is described in Hebrew writings as a son of murderous Sennacherib, king of Assyria. And so we need to begin to realize that these Near Eastern people, even us, people's names had correlations to the deity that they worshipped, to the deity that was over that landmass. When we begin to look at the Tower of Babel, and even when we begin to look at the Epic of Gilgamesh, if you are a true biblical scholar, stand within the 66 canons is poor scholarship. It makes you a poor student, even if you're just thinking about history. You can't fully grasp history class just by reading the book that your teacher is giving you. This is why they give you books in history class. They give you books to do book reports on. They give you other books because you cannot find all of the information about a book within a book. And this is why books use other books and articles as sources. The same goes with the Bible. We have to realize that the Bible went through so many different cancels that all of our scriptures are not even in there. We need to begin to realize that the Hebrew language is totally different than the English language. And the version that we have is very poorly translated. And this is from someone that's currently studying on Hebrew. And when I tell you just a little bit that I know has unveiled and unearthed a lot of things, it's a big difference. The amount of information that was removed from this canon that gave descriptive markers of even these demons talking and conversing and the different type of rituals needed to cast them out. We are spiritually ignorant. 
We need to be realized that the power of the Bible is a Sabbath God. And this is why they made correlations between him and Saturn. See, it's some stuff that I be trying not to <laughs> try not to go into. But when I be asked certain questions after I give like in-depth answers and resources, um, <clears throat> he's he's associated with the 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 constellation of Saturn. We need to realize that these are extraterrestrial beings and they do not live within this sphere called Earth. Saturn has a black cube. We begin to look over into Mecca. What do they begin to march around? I'm just telling you guys what they begin to say. This is what the, the ancients say. This is what these historians say. These astronomers and astrologers and the oral traditions and history say. They also make a correlation between Melchizedek and Jupiter. Sedek. Like, we have to begin to study and know what is going on. The Bible gives us the name of these gods, and it is our due diligence to find out who they are, how they will worship. And when we begin to look at Sennacherib, king of Assyria, he is responsible. Him and Sargon. Shalomanancer for the destruction and the, the, the captivity of the northern kingdom that the Apostle Paul was writing to. They took them and put them in Assyria and in Babylon, Mesopotamia, in the Indus Valley, in um, Spain, in Eurasia. Like they replaced the Israelites. And when they replaced, displaced the Israelites, they replaced them. With Assyrians. So when you look over today in the quote unquote Middle East, which we all know was created by the Balfour Declaration in 1948 after the fall of the Ottoman Empire in 1923, we are very well aware of the fact that the kingdom will not be naturally rebuilt by man's hands, but upon the regathering of the Israelites into the wilderness as the barley wheat. Come on, you guys. This is scripture. The Babylonian nation are known to be enemies. And so whatever their gods are, and however their gods are worshipped, if you, if you worship after this, you're Babylonian. Second King reports that the Sapphirites burned their children in the fire. Now, there is a law in Torah. That says that it is abomination to pass your children through the fire to the deity Moloch. So there's there's some similar identical customs between this deity and Moloch. And so when it says the Seraphites burned their children in the fire as sacrifices to Adar-Melech and Anma-Melech, the gods of Seraphim. The Seraphites are given as people deported by the Assyrians to Samaria. I told you guys, these were people who were not originally in Samaria, in the northern kingdom, where the sons of Ephraim began to dwell. They were displaced by these pagan worshipers. When we begin to look at the New Testament and the woman at the well, we're going to make it plain again. We gonna make it. I'm gonna tell you guys this, right? When I when I watch these videos back and I listen as a student, I make things out really, really plain, really, really clear, and really, really simple. And it's because I've worked with special education students my entire life, and I've also taught on a high level. So it's like I know how to give meaty information and dissect it to the smallest pieces. Just based off of the comments that you guys leave under the video. And I'm a mother. I'm my children's first teacher. And when I teach them something, they grasp understanding because of how thorough of a teacher I am. So if you just listen to what I'm saying, if you click in the sources, and if you stop asking questions out of your ego. See, that'd be a lot of times we ask questions in opposition to challenge what it is that we have been indoctrinated with, not that which it is that we know to be truth. 
based off of studying and based off of research. Because if you were a historian or even just a student of the word, and I and, and I say something or somebody else say something and they give you the books and they give you the scriptures, it's going to line up like that. The Ruach says, no, no, the Most High says, I will withhold no good thing from thee. So if you are watching my videos and you are actually taking notes and you are actually praying, and if you are actually seeking the Most High, he's going to reveal it unto you. If you are not grasping it, it's because you are operating in foolish pride and indoctrination and our, his people perish due to lack of knowledge. Put your ego down when it comes to the word of the Hamashiach. That's final. And it's not to say because I'm right and I'm in all to be all. And I'm in. No, y'all, I'm just a teacher. I just teach. This is like if I opened up a book and I started talking about psychology, my major. I'm so excited to go back to school. If I start talking about that. Or like, it's about if I start talking about food, I'm just teaching what I know and providing the proof through methodological research. The research that I do is based on a college level, a doctorate level of research. So just walk with me, y'all. Just walk with me. Now, majority of y'all do. That's why y'all here. Let me go ahead and get down, y'all. I just, I, uh, it needs to, it needs to come full circle. So when we look at Second Kings seventeen and thirty one, we see that the Assyrians worship these gods. And so when we look at the woman at the well, and they called her a Samaritan, but Mashiach referred to her as a dog. Why is this? Because she was an Assyrian. She was not a bloodline. Northern Kingdom Jew, but we would not know this if we do not study on the captivities, which is why it is important that we read outside of the Bible in congruency with the Bible. Do you know who Shalomanazar is? Sargon? Sennacherib? Outside of the Bible, can you prove outside of the Bible that these accounts actually happened in history? Because I thought I was smart when I was in Pentecost and I was dumb as a box of rocks. And sadly, I was one of the top preachers. That's sad. It says, Second King... 18 and 34, where are the gods of Hamath and Arphide? Where are the gods of Sirfar and Hina and Eva? Have they rescued Samaria from my hand? Isaiah 36 and 19 reads basically identical. Now, according to A.R. Millard, and see, I'll be naming names, sources, and everything. Saul, Ulan, and others, Adar Malek likely represent originally our dear Malek, majestic king, or the majestic one is king. A cognitive, our dear Malik, also with similar Malik, our dear, with the Maraphones inverted. And Baal, our dear. Y'all hear that? There's a correlation between the Semitic deity and the epithet of Baal. Adar-Malek is commonly understood as a companion of Anna-Malek due to their associations in 2 Kings 17, the similarity of their names and the similarity of their worship through child sacrifice. Before the identification with epigraphic Adar-Malek, various attempts since generally rejected were made to interpret the origin of the name Adar-Malek. Okay, so... Now, oh, here we go. This is important. The reconstructed form of Adar, Adar, or the variant Adur Maluk was once almost universally accepted as the original Akkadian form of this name. And this is when it's spelled specifically just like Adar the month. Adar Malek means Adar is pre prince. Was pronounced in a serious Adar Malek. Selected proper names 
um, 33A, page 140. This is the source. Um, both Adar and Anu, which we know is a Mesopotamian deity, and then the Canaanite and Ugraic and Hebraic Israelite, this would be El, are very frequently mentioned deities of Assyria. Adar, originally pronounced Atar, is a word of Akkadian origin and means father of decision. It resembles Namtar, literally meaning decisions, destiny, destination. Likewise, name of a plague god. Now, Peter Genesis proposed in the late 19th century that the variant of an unrecorded Hadad Malek, identifying Hadad as king, thus identify Adar Malek with a Canaanite god, Hadad. Hadad is, in fact, ADA, recorded as a variant of Hadad. H A D A. Hadad is one of, is a very popular name amongst Arabs. So sometimes they drop the A, sometimes they keep the A. So what does from the Jewish Encyclopedia, the Talmuds, um, Sanhedrin, which are the courts of the elders that Apostle Paul and them was being taken up on and things of that nature, that Adar Malek was an idol of seraphine in the shape of an ass. This is to be concluded from the name, which is compound of Yod Dilet Resh, meaning to carry. Compared to the Syriac Yod Dilet Resh, I mean, I'm sorry, y'all. Alf Dilet Resh, Alf Dilet Resh Yod. And it was also spelled. Mem Lamech Kef. These heathens worshiped the same God, the same animal which carried their burdens. <laughs> okay, I just saw something else. Still another explanation of the name ascribes to the God the form of a peacock. That's what just made me pause. But I know a lot about, well, I know a little bit about the peacock and their symbolism when it comes to some deeper esoteric governmental things. Let's just say NBC, um, CBS or one of those news stations, look into the peacock, look into the peacock paintings um, of these artists and things of that nature. So in demonology, Adar Malek is considered a demon in some Judeo-Christian traditions so he appears in milton's paradise lost where he's a fallen angel along with asamados see and this is why i'm talking about going outside of the bible because if you knew who if you went outside of the bible just the i think it's tobit and the apocrypha begins to mention asmodeus in the lesser key of solomon and this is who helped build solomon's temple we don't know enough about spiritual warfare, about our books. They was vanquished by the angel Uriel. Now, when we began to thank you, Holy Spirit, look at how that happened. Look at how that happened. Look at how that happened. <laughs> when we began to go back to the previous videos, when I began to talk about speaking, <laughs> Speaking in tongues and how there was an angel as clothing fire who came down as a mighty Russian wind. And I began to line up how when the Israelites were wading in the water and they were walking through being exodus and they were going into the wilderness. As spoken about in the book of Revelation, as talked about to happen once again. In the end time, before the real building of the kingdom, before we go back into the land, when we will be in the wilderness, there will be wars, 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 so many wars. And you will not know how many wars are going to take place through that 49 year. See, we, <laughs> the Bible talks about the Jubilee period and the regathering being at the end of Jubilee. The end of Jubilee is 50 years. What happens throughout the mother years? We only talk about seven years. The Apostle Paul talks about the wars between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. 
He was a Pharisee. He was a teacher of the law. So a lot of you guys are quoting Paul and he kept the law. He circumcised Gentiles. That's a qualification for salvation. If you're not circumcised, you won't get next to the deity. You have to work to get close to the deity. Faith without works is dead. Only Catholics and new age doctrines and things of that nature will tell you that all you have to do is repent and say, Hail Mary and, and say, God, forgive me. And that's it. That's not biblical. Do we even know how to repent? Do you know how to pour out a libation in the name of the person that you sinned against? Have you been baptized in those names of the people that you? <laughs> That's okay. I don't, I don't know, but maybe y'all know what I'm talking about. So when you begin to look at these angels, Acts 238 with the clothing fire. The Malek and the Malek that was a, a, a pillar of fire to lead out the Israelites. When we begin to look at Uriel, his name literally means God is my flame. Then I begin to tell you that Ur means light. Or Oriel is the name of the archangel who was mentioned in the post-exilic rabbinical tradition. And so, you know, a lot of people, this, you know, the, the Hellenistic period when the Hasmosinian dynasty, autonomous living, all of that. So if I begin to describe how he has looked, then this could make some correlations with these molecs that you see in the book of Revelation. He's an archangel, fire and palm, carrying a book, a scroll, a flaming sword, a disc of sun and um, celestial orb. Or holding stars and constellations. What does what does the book of Revelation say? About the Malek that appeared. I'm just asking. We would know about these things. So this Malek worked to vanquish Asmodeus, who was side by side with Adar Malek. And we're going to find out even more about Adar Malek and if it's okay for you to be worshiping on a Sunday. Raphael. Jehovah Rapha. Rapha. To come back. Job 38 and 8 begins to talk about. Job 41 begins to talk about Raphaim. That flood that took place in Genesis 1 and is talked about in Ecclesiastics, the world that existed that we know not of. What was, was, was again, and then the book of Isaiah, Psalms 104. When Raphaim happens, healing happens, regeneration happens. It is stated that this is the Malek that stirred the pool of Bethesda. According to the Quran, which you should know something about the Quran too. These are the Hadiths or the oral traditions of the Arabs. Your brothers, sisters, and cousins. It is said that Raphael is going to be the one to announce the day of judgment. He is represented by holding a bottle or a flask, sounding a trumpet. But the sound of the trumpet is not that in scripture. So how would you know? What Malek is assigned to do what in end time prophecy if you don't ever open your book? At the final trump, the sky shall unfold and there goes that circumcision again, y'all. Circumcision of our heart. And if you are a man, fleshly circumcision. Because it appears unclean to the deity and no flesh shall glory in his sight. Now, let's begin to look just at one more source about Adar Malek. And then we're going we to let it rest. Now, this is another article. To date, no mention of the Hebrew name. Adar Malek has been found on Assyrian inscriptions. So, Bala Scott. So scholars and Bible commentators have been left to speculate the name Adar Malek is most likely a reconstruction of the West Semitic Adir Malek, meaning the glorious one is king. A fitting name for a son deity. 
Hala, 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 hala. He is son deity. So if you, if you say that you worship the most high, who's a Sabbath deity, and you tell him, you know what? I got you. I got you tomorrow. Even though he told you, this is my day. The mother days, that's when you're supposed to be working. You're supposed to be creating. You're supposed to be being productive, just like I was in creation. He mapped it out for us. Those other days are set aside for worship and feast days during their respective times based off of the archaeological calendar. Saturday, according to the Gregorian calendar, the seventh day. That's just his. He said it. I didn't say it. So, I mean, keep on lying to yourself and say that when you go to church on Sundays or when you worship on another day, can you read your Bible and do all of these, other, you know, fast and praise on any day of the week? Yes, because he's the most high. Having your set aside day. And y'all know what I'm talking about. So stop playing semantics because when you raise up and if you keep on, because all of us <laughs> are far removed. If we keep on kicking against the pricks, he will ask you at the day of judgment. What happened? Tierra tried to warn you. You ignored her. She was crying loud. She was sparing not. Why is your ignorance and your pride allowing you to reject what thus said me? But hey, the link between Adar and Molech, see what I tell y'all, comes from the practice of worshiping both deities by burning children. The name Anamalek, as we've already talked about, that is mentioned in 2 Kings 19. This deity may refer to the male counterpart of the goddess Anat. And we gon' I'm I'm not even gonna go into Anat too much. Or Annette. We we not gonna touch these other guys like that. We gon' we gon' we gon' hold it off. Now, it also said that it means king of fire. See? See y'all? He is depicted as a lion head body and beard and wings. He's a sun deity. He was worshipped by the Phoenicians, the Syrians, the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. This is what we have today, guys. This is one of the many sun deities that was mentioned in the Bible. Continue on worshiping on a Sunday. And put in another deity in the face of the Most High. And see what happens. This is Jacoby of Jacoby Gems. Bye.